In today's video we're going to be talking about exponents and natural logs. Now this video is aimed in particular at students who are doing A-level physics, however they're currently not doing A-level maths. This video will be a lot more useful if you guys have a scientific calculator handy so that you're doing you're going through the same calculations as I am as the video goes through we're going to be talking about two functions the first one is the exponential function and then the other one is the natural log function okay now the first function that I would like to talk about is the exponential function if you do physics at university and even at A level, you're going to notice that this function keeps appearing in many different parts of physics. This is because this is the function of rapid decay and additionally any rapid growth. The uh, function, if we were to plot, let's say y is equal to e to the x against so for to plot e to the x y is equal to e to the x against x the function is going to look something like this so it's going to start off really really slowly notice that when x is equal to zero this function is going to equal one and then it will rise really quickly the opposite happens if we had y is equal to e to the minus x so if we had E, e to the minus x we're going to have a really rapid decay pretty similar to a capacitor discharging now the most fundamental thing that we need to be able to do is first of all calculate exponential functions so let's say that if we had e to the power of minus one we need to be able to calculate this with our calculator now i've got a little picture here of my scientific calculator that i've just taken and the way we uh, bring out the exponential function is by pressing this shift button and then straight after that you're going to notice that the just above the ln button so just above this button over here it says e to the power of x etc so we can use that and uh, we could literally just type in in our calculator e to the power of minus one and if you do that right now you're going to get that e to the power of minus one and if you input this into your scientific calculator you're going to get that e to the power of minus one is approximately equal to 0 0.37 up to two significant figures. Let's do another practice one. What I want you to input into your calculator is e to the power of minus 0.5 divided by 300 times 10 to the power of minus 6 multiplied by 5 times 10 to the power of 5. And you need to be quite careful in putting that. You could either use brackets or the fraction um, function of your calculator. And the answer is 0.996672216, etc. So hopefully that gives you some practice in inputting the exponential function. So well done, we're almost there. Now let's have a look at logs. Now the first question that we need to answer really is what is a logarithm? In order to illustrate that, what I would like to start with is the rule of logs or the basic definition of logs. Now imagine that I have a number b that I've raised to the power of y and that's going to give me x. So let's just put in some numbers to try and make sense of this. So let's say I have 2 to the power of 3 and 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 2 times 2 which is 4 times 2 which is 8 so 2 to the power of 3 which is 8 now the logarithm of what is known as base 2 of 8 is actually going to give me the power that i've raised this to so this is going to equal to 3 you may find this initially confusing, however, the basic thing to remember is that the logarithm is a function which is inverse 
to the exponential function to raising of a power. So if we were to take the logarithm of the logarithm base two of eight, what we're actually going to get is that power. Now, a couple of really important points to make is that this number here, two in this case, this is known as the base of the logarithm. And this is given in B in that general equation above. Now, there are two special bases that are particularly useful in physics. One of them is the natural logarithm, which is log base E. And uh, so E is just a uh, number. It's a very, very important number in mathematics and physics. So it's approximately, approximately equal to 2.7 one eight etc etc it's actually an in uh, it's actually an irrational number so it means that it's never ending if we have a log base e we tend to call that just ln the other really important base that sometimes comes up in questions is log base 10 so log base 10 and in ocr physics a this is normally given as LG. Sometimes it's written in general as uh, just log. I believe that's the way it is on my scientific calculator as well, but this is something just to be aware of. You can use your calculator to calculate the natural log of, um, of any number. So let me give you an example. Uh, we can input into the scientific calculator, let's say the log or the natural log of 0.5. So now let's have a go. Please locate the ln function you calculator and let's punch that in. So um, in the case of my scientific calculator, uh, the ln function is just here. If I was to just input ln of 0.5, I'm going to get minus 0.6931, etc., etc. So this is how we can calculate exponential functions and how we can calculate logarithmic functions. Now let's have a look at the properties of those functions. Probably the most important property that we're going to be looking at is that exponential functions and logarithms are inverse functions. Now that means that they undo the effect of the other function. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I had e to the power of 5 and what I'm going to do is take the logarithm of that expression. So I'm going to take the logarithm, the natural log in particular, of e to the power of 5 and in this case what I will be left with is uh, just 5. It's important to know that this only works if uh, they have the the same base in this case l1 is just log base d but it's much easier to remember simply that ln of e to the power of x will always equal x like so. Luckily for us, we're actually given this rule in our formula booklet, as you can see over here, and uh, they even added another constant k. So if you have e to the power of kx, what you're going to get if you take the natural log of this is kx. Notice that there are two other really important rules which are a little bit counterintuitive for logs. But if you had the logarithm of uh, a times b, this is actually equal to log of a plus the log of b. This also applies uh, for natural logs. So for instance, if I was to have, let's say, the natural log of a b, this will be equal to ln of a plus the natural log of b. Exactly the same for the rule of division as well. If we're dividing inside of the log, this will be equal to log of a minus log of b.